Hi everyone, welcome back to Photography by Harrison. We're going to be doing something quick and simple today. If you're not into maybe flash photography, or, or maybe wireless flash photography, I'm going to show you a simple, easy way you can get into it, probably less than probably $200. And what am I talking about? With, with the light stands, these light stands, they go right now between $50 and $100. These are manual flashes. Both of these are manual flashes. You can order them off of uh, eBay for probably less than $25. So now you're talking about $50, $50, $25, that's $50. So you're looking at $100. And, and, this, and the wireless trigger, the one that's on the camera, and two remotes for the camera. The ones, now the ones I'm using, I got them like six years ago, and it's, all three of them was probably $35. They're still sold, but they're probably $50 now. But you have to realize with everything that's going on in China, it might take you a while to get them. So I'm just going to show you how well they work. Yes, they do have a, they only maybe work up to 50 feet, but still, if you're just getting into flash photography and wireless photography, you don't want to spend a lot of money because you just want to see how it is. Well, come along with me. Now I'll see you on the other side, and I'm going to show you. We are starting our test at F4. 100th of a second, ISO is 125, and we are 10 feet away. The camera is set at 90 millimeters, which is a good portrait length. And let's see if my little inexpensive flashes will at least work from 10 feet away. And yes, they do work from 10 feet away. So now let's move back to 20. Now we're 20 feet away, and let's see how well my low budget wireless works. Yep, as you can see, it still works fine from 20 feet away. So let's back up another 10 feet and see what happens. 30 feet away, and let's see how well it's working now. Well, it still works at 30 feet, and depending on the side of your studio, that should be, at least work well inside your studio. And if you're outside, even with a long lens, you still really get full body length. Yes, they still work at 40 feet, although sometimes it is hard to see that flash on video when it's aimed directly at the camera. I am now at 45 feet away from the flashes, and yes, I did change the angle because I was running out of room, but let's see if they are still going to work. Also, 45 feet away for low budget wireless and transmitter, that's not too bad. How big is your studio? Now, 50 feet away, so let's see how well the flash is going to work. As you can see, I think we're just about reaching this maximum limit because it is beginning to falter. A correction, a misfire, whichever word you want to use. But hey, 45 feet is not bad, and 50, maybe in a, punt, a pinch, might actually work. Not too bad. We are now at 55 feet away, and yes, it is working, but it's inconsistent. It doesn't work every time I press the shutter, which means to be safe, 55 feet definitely is no, 50 feet only in extreme mercy, but 45 feet on in, and I think you're good. Now, that's not too bad for, for a low level, I mean, for a low cost transmitter and receiver. I just, you know, like I said, it's working now a little bit better, but it's inconsistent. So I'd say don't take it over 45 feet. Both my lights are set up to six feet, three inches, the average height of a lot of people in North Carolina. So as long as your model's not even taller than that, you still can get back with a roughly long lens and get all of them in the frame and your low budget wireless flashes will still work. Just limit them to 45 feet. And I'm going to walk down to the camera to show you that they actually are set up at 6 feet 3. Because I'm 6 feet 2, but with these boots I'm wearing and my little toboggan on my head, I'm probably going to be a 6 3 or taller. And as you can see, both lights, it looks like it. it's hard for me to tell, they're either my height or a little taller. How do I know my measurements are accurate? Simple. I just use a measurer. 
But also, just to let you know, this isn't manual focus, because you know when it comes to autofocus, sometimes Panasonic cameras do not want to work. Now this is the manual flash I am using. It's a Sunpak 422D. You can probably pick these up on eBay for probably $20 to $25. Now this is actually one of my original ones that I purchased when I was in school over actually 40 years ago. And as you can see, it still works. Yes, it's a manual flash, but sometimes take your camera off automatic, put it on manual, and go out and use it. A lot of times that forces you to think about the picture and what you're doing. And also, when push comes to shove, it's always good to know how to shoot in manual. Anyone can shoot in, 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 in auto, but if you want to be a real photographer, at least learn how to shoot in manual. Now, I know what you're thinking right about now. If I use that flash indoors or outdoors, want it to be kind of harsh? Yes. That's why just a low budget, $9 little diffuser like this I do the trick. I know what you're thinking. Well, it's a diffuser. It's designed to bounce the spread the light and bounce it off walls, things like that. But there's no walls outside. That's true. There's no walls outside, but you can make your own walls. What I mean by that is, look here, on the inside, I lined it with aluminum foil. What that does, it gives me my walls no matter where I go, plus it adds a little warmth to the flash. Remember, that's always a little work, workarounds. Remember, when you get a lot of those big umbrella flashes and soft box, what do they tell you? you? You have a silver side that you can add to add warm. Well, this is the same thing. Aluminum is silver. Just use a little double-sided tape and boom. So not only you add a little warmth to your flash, you always have walls no matter where you are. Inside, outside, of your inside, the walls blue, brown, or green, you're still gonna have a nice color that you're photographing the individuals with. This is a close-up look of the receivers, one for each flash, and this is the transmitter. When I originally bought these, the transmitter and these two receivers came as one unit. Now you have to buy them separate. And as you can see, one has four channels written on it. And yes, you can control of the four different flashes from these low cost units. But like I said earlier, you know what's going on in China right now. So and plus, I've had these like probably, what to say, eight years. So the prices probably went up to probably $50, $55 now. And, and with what's going on in China, it might be a long waiting list to get them. But still, for low cost wireless, and you're just starting out, you can't beat it. I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up button. That motivates me to go out and do more videos. And of course, if you don't like what you see, it's fine to hit the thumbs down button, but just tell me what you don't like it. That way will also motivate me to go out and do more videos that you will like the next time. Because you know I've said it before, and I must continue to say it, no one knows it all when it comes to photography. And the more you learn about photography, the more you learn you didn't know. And again, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey, and I will see you next time.